to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Meryl Swanson with you and joined today by Professor Colin Waters, who's from the Space Physics Group from the School of Mathematical and Physical Sciences at the University of Newcastle. Professor Waters, hello and welcome. Hello and welcome, Meryl. I'm, nice I'm to a- be here. I'm a little bit flummoxed at the moment, if I can use that word. We're talking today about space physics, but it's not astrophysics and it's not astronomy. Can you clear up for us, what is space physics? What's going on there? Sure. So when I talk with people about my research area, they normally think it's to do with astrophysics, black holes, formation of galaxies and and astrophysics, really, perhaps popularised by... TV shows and Mm. so on, and Stephen Hawking and some other people who work in that area. But really what we do is a little bit closer to Earth. Okay. So if we think about our own home here in space, Earth, and we have the atmosphere, um, and then above that, um, then the atmosphere basically becomes ionised due to solar radiation, essentially. So we have a magnetised plasma. Most of space is in the plasma state. So does that mean it has a charge in lay terms? The ionisation is actually a charge? Is that is that it? Yeah, so it's okay. a collection mostly of protons and electrons. It's a fully charged gas is okay. the way to explain it. And so the area between Earth and the Sun yes. and our solar system, mostly between the Earth and the Sun and the links between solar output radiation as well as particle radiation and its effect on earth is is space physics okay so that would take into account things like when solar radiation makes it difficult for mobile phone users and those blips of solar radiation we've heard there's been some big events of solar radiation in recent times haven't there yes and the activity or the space weather as we call it um, goes on a, a cycle with the sun. It's normally an 11, 11-year 11 cycle. Okay. And we happen to be in a fairly energetic phase of that cycle at the moment. We're just coming off a solar maximum. Okay. And so energetic events normally occur during those times. And one of the um, more interesting events, I guess, was on June 23 when we saw an aurora over Sydney. There, and there was a lot of talk about that because we're used to seeing those things closer to the poles and people often travel great dis- distances to witness the northern lights or see the southern aurora, but yet we had it. So why did we have it so close to home, literally? Yes, and so basically what happens, you have to understand a little bit about the mechanism of to how it works. Mm. And in order to do that, we need to understand how the Earth's magnetic field and the shape of that reaches out into space and how that interacts with the incoming radiation, mostly particle radiation from the sun. So the sun is a big fusion, nuclear fusion reactor. That's Mm -hmm. how it gets its energy. And the byproducts of that are protons and electrons and a little bit of helium ions as well. And so that particle outflow from the nuclear fusion process on the sun is called the solar wind. And when that solar wind interacts with Earth's magnetic field in space, then we get these large currents and these charged particle precipitation down into the atmosphere which then excites the atmospheric uh, atoms and they give off photons or they give off light in certain colours. Right. And so when you have a fairly energetic event, <clears throat> then those precipitating particles move to lower latitudes as the magnetic field of the Earth sort of opens up a little bit more and then we can see aurora in Tasmania and even sometimes in Sydney. Yeah, so, so mm. basically it, it creeps its way around the ball, if you like, rather than staying at the top and bottom of it. I know that's really yes. basic <laughs> terminology, but I'm just trying to get it in my mind as to yeah. why we were able to see it in Sydney. You've said it's an active time. Can mm. we expect more of this and, and other things like this? What, 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 how good are you at predicting this? I'm often <laughs> going cranky about the Bureau of Meteorology going, oh, the weather, and they change their mind every five minutes. How accurate can you be and what's coming up? Yes. So the prediction of space weather is a major research area and that's what we're really about um, in our research group. And it's an effort with an international team as well. Um, and in some senses, it's a little bit easier um, than doing surface weather with the Bureau. The Bureau of Meteorology also have actually a space weather unit in Sydney and we work very closely with them and their task is to try and predict more accurately when some of these energetic events are going to occur. And we do know, for example, the more energetic events that give us these auroras and some of the other effects on technology um, occur on the declining phase of the active cycle, which is where we are now. 
okay. in our 11-year cycle. And so in answer to your question, can we expect more? The answer is yes. Um, <clears throat> when? I don't know. <laughs> oh, bummer. I was hoping you'd be able to say, you know, in the next two months on this date, and I'd be like, oh, good, I'll be able to lever let everyone know to watch the skies. Right. But, uh, but so the answer is we don't know exactly, but we know that we could. We just need to keep our eyes peeled. Yes, and basically we give probabilities like the Bureau do. Yes. So there's a certain probability that this might happen. Yes. Wonderful. Um, and that's what we can do. Uh, look, mm. it's fascinating stuff and, and truly, even though I, I get a little cheeky about the Bureau, I, uh, mostly I'm very grateful for the work they do. Professor Colin Waters from the Space Physics Group from the School of Mathematical and Physical Sciences at the University of Newcastle. Thank you for your time and good luck picking the lights in the sky. Thank you, Meryl. Uh, it's an inter what an interesting thing to be studying and some magnificent sights, I should imagine, to see as well.